Hey guys, how's it going? Well, I think everybody's gotten a chance to watch most of the videos the last couple of days. So I'm going to move on. And this was a subject that was pointed out to me. And it was actually pointed out, not by a person, but in inadvertently through a person. And I'm watching the last video from uh, Amir on Behold Israel about the election and what's going on and everything they're saying is accurate as to what's going to happen as far the, as the election goes and it reminded me of what um, of that reminder that came through another person and it was through a, an email and it was it was the one we talked about yesterday and this is the gospel and I've told you guys before that you know the gospel is more than just 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Here's, here's, here's where we're at here. The gospel is more than just this. The, the, the gospel expands more than just this. This is a summarized gospel. And when I started to hear people last year and then the beginning of this year go on and on about how this is the gospel, this is the gospel, this is just a summarized gospel. There's more to it than this. And there's many more scriptures than just 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. So many people have been duped into being stuck on 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 that they never look deeper into the gospel. And I think this is where a lot of deception may be coming from. So we're going to go through this article here. And this is on jamesmere.com, Christian Discipleship Guide. And I love what he says little quote up here, do not merely listen to the word, do what it says, James 1, 22, 25, right up here at the top of the picture. So we're going to go through this article and what it says here, and it talks about the different places where the gospel appears in the Bible. And you're going to see an expanded version on the summarized 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And see, if you don't study these things, if you don't look deeper in these things, you never, you never get a, a, a greater understanding about these things. Scripture verses that summarize the gospel are sprinkled throughout the Bible. Here are some cited by J.I. Packer in the book, Grounded in the Gospel. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed, Isaiah 53, 5. That's the gospel. That's the, that's the summarized gospel. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and give his life as a ransom for many, Mark 10, 45. All of these talk about the gospel. It's not just 1 Corinthians 15, which so many people, they're so lazy and they won't dig deeper. They just go by what people tell them. But you can't go by what people tell you, that people can't be trusted. You've got to look at the word and dig deeper. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. One, one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. Yeah, that's the gospel. That's the summarized summarization of the gospel. See, people don't ever learn this if they don't read. And that's the problem. But Christians aren't reading their Bible. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Acts 10.43 Through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything. You could not be justified from, you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. Acts 13.38-39 he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. The third day he rose from the dead according to scriptures. And he appeared. 1 Corinthians 15.3-6 Paul writes that this is the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you were saved, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 2. In outlining it here, Paul asserts that what I received I passed on to you is of first importance, 1 Corinthians 15, 3. God was in Christ reconciling the world to him. And see, that's funny because even 1 Corinthians 15 has more to it than what people let on. People want to oversimplify certain things. And what it does is it takes people's eyes off of it. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not accounting men's trespasses against them. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. 
Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descendant from David. This is my gospel, 2 Timothy 2.8. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good, Titus 2.14. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life, Titus 3, 4, 7. Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people and will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him, Hebrews 9:28. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Peter 2.24 Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3.18 This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 4.10 So you can see quite clearly there's a whole lot more to the gospel than just 1 Corinthians 15 and there are more verses in the Bible including in the Old Testament that discuss this very clearly and it struck me that so many people are hung up on 1 Corinthians 15 and they're missing the greater explanation of the gospel where's the greater explanation of the gospel well the first one's in Matthew Let's see, 23, 24, where is it at? Starts here in the plot to kill Jesus. Jesus anointed at Bethany, Judas to betray Jesus, the Passover with the disciples, institution of the Lord's Supper, Jesus foretells Peter's denial, Jesus prays in Gethsemane, betrayal and arrest of Jesus, Jesus before Caiaphas and the council. Peter denies Jesus. Then we go to 27. Jesus delivered to Pilate. Judas hangs himself. Jesus before Pilate. The crowd chooses Barabbas. Pilate delivers Jesus to be crucified. Jesus is mocked. The crucifixion. <clears throat> the death of Jesus. Jesus is buried. The guard at the tomb. The resurrection, the report of the guard, the Great Commission. You can see that the actual gospel is three chapters long. That's just in the book of Matthew. That's not counting Mark, Luke, and John. Now, a lot of people want to deny these three books and say, that, oh, these aren't the gospel. Jesus hadn't died yet. Yeah, they are, because they describe exactly what happened to him in real time. When we try to make the Bible fit into our understanding and we take on somebody else's understanding instead of looking for it ourselves, we make a huge mistake because somebody else's understanding is not necessarily accurate. Somebody else's understanding is not, may not match the Word of God. This is why we have to read. This is why we have to study. 1 Corinthians 15 is just a summary of and you saw that list of summaries that I showed you. I'll link that in the, in the description. It's just a summary of the gospel. The actual gospel is far greater than just four verses. And it's far more expanded. And we do ourselves a disservice if we don't read it. If we don't read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... If we don't get into the actual story, we never learn. We never learn the real details behind what happened. And we don't take it to heart. It doesn't affect us. I see Christians all the time. They can, they can go through the Gospels. They can go through the story and it not even touch them. I can't read through these stories without crying. Because this is personal to me. What, what he did for me, what, he, what it talks about in these four books, is personal to me. But so many people miss that because they're unwilling to read the Bible. They want it easy. They want somebody to tell them what to think and tell them what to do. We have that going on in our presidential election right now. 
People want people to tell them what to do. They're all calling for Joe Biden to be president. He's not president. He just happens to be the person that is in the lead right now, but he's not president. The election isn't over. The Electoral College doesn't vote until December 14th. Inauguration into office isn't until January 20th. He's not president. And now that the states are all stepping up going, okay, we're going to recount this because this is wrong. There's some states where the registered voters exceeded the population of the state. So I have to offer this, and you can get mad if you want to, but if you're supporting the Democratic Party, if you're supporting or, or voting for Joe Biden, if that's who you want, for their, you've aligned yourself with their sin and the cheating and lying they're doing trying to win this election. And it's very disturbing that the only way they can even possibly get close to a win is to lie and cheat. See, last year, everybody forgot what happened. Or not last year, 2016, everybody forgot what happened. <clears throat> I followed through. And I dug and I found that after everything got quiet, they went through and they sorted through every vote. They took out the doubles. They took out the triples. They took out the dead voters. They took out the illegal voters. They took out the children that voted. And they counted the real votes. Trump won by a landslide. Hillary wasn't even close. But in order for them to get to that point, they had to cheat. The same thing's happening now, and they have clear evidence of it. How do you reconcile that? How do you reconcile supporting a party that does that, that wants to lie, cheat, and steal to get where they want to go? You should be ashamed of yourself if you voted for them, for Biden. You should be ashamed of yourself if you're, if you're supporting a party that resorts to that type of of lying and, and deception to try to win. You should read the gospel. The actual Read the actual story. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all three of them. I just showed you where it's at. You should read it in its entirety. Now think about that. Did he cheat to become king? Did he cheat and lie to become our savior? No. He suffered persecution. Persecution that none of us could go through. But this is what the world wants. The world doesn't want a savior. The world wants somebody to give them what they want. The world wants somebody to cater to them and take care of their needs. And they're perfectly happy. Oh, I know you need to cut my leg off, but you know, as long as you give me free health, free health care, I don't care. There's no integrity in our country anymore. There's no integrity in, in the population anymore. Integrity is onesies and twosies here and there. Not like it used to be. But this is what we have going on. And it's in our world and it's in the Christian world. There's no integrity. People aren't willing to stand up for what is really true. They're willing to, they're willing to stand up what their truth is. Well, the truth is, the gospel of Jesus Christ is contained throughout the Bible, not just 1 Corinthians 15. The truth is that what's going on in our presidential election right now is heresy and deception and lies and cheating. And anybody who's associated themselves with it had better think twice. Had better, they better repent, they better turn from this, better change their mind. Because by agreeing with that, you've aligned yourself with that sin. See, those warnings are in there for a reason. And it's really been stressed up to me to share these warnings as much as possible. Because people aren't getting it. And there's a lot of people that are going to suffer unnecessarily because they are unwilling to stand up for what's right. Listen, the suffering that I'm going through and that I'm going to go through for standing up for the truth is nothing compared to the suffering that's coming for those who don't. How do I know? It's in the Bible. But uh, in order for you to see it, you got to read it. Don't be lazy. Stand up for what's right. If you can't, what good are you to him? He stood up for you on this cross and died for you on this cross. Why can't you stand up for him here? <clears throat> 
can't you stand up for what's right and have integrity for him here? That's what he's looking for. Christians who are going to stand up for him. There aren't many. It's kind of disturbing how quickly people abandoned him. Not like, not like Peter denied him. How quickly people completely turn their back on Christ and walk the other direction. Yet still want to have the title of Christian. It's terrible. <coughs> Think about it. Consider it. Read these stories. Think about this and, and meditate on this. Because this was all done for each and every one of us individually. And for us to be cavalier about it like we are. It's not respectful and it's not, uh, it's not a blessing to the Lord for us to be cavalier about this. This, is, this is, goes much deeper than just four verses. As a church, we are failing our Lord and Savior. As a people, we are failing our nation. We're outnumbered, but we still have a voice. We can still stand up for what's right individually. It's just a shame that not more people will do that. 